Hello everyone, this is Jarvis S. Scott with What's Happening in Birmingham. Today I have the honor and pleasure of being with attorney Sam Wiggins of the Wiggins Law Firm. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Wiggins. Good afternoon. Good, good. Thank you for taking time out today to sit down and tell people a little more about your business. Um, first question I'd like to ask you is why did you choose a career in law? Well, I, I, I grew up on Perry Mason, L.A. Law, and those were my favorite shows. So, uh, that's what I decided to do. I always want to be a lawyer. Okay, I like, uh, I love Perry Mason, love Matlock, and that's all I wanted to do when I was growing up. Okay, okay. Why did you start your own law firm? Well, it, it just so happens when I first came out of Alabama, uh, it's kind of difficult getting a job, and I worked for a small firm. And when I worked for a small firm, I got some experience. And then I was able to go out on my own and be blessed and go out on my own. And I've been on my own since 1994. Okay. And uh, I had vision of having 50 or 100 lawyers, but it worked out being a small firm. It's been great for me so far. Okay, okay. What type of law does your firm specialize? Generally, I say about 95% of our firm deals with personal injury. Okay. That's auto accidents, motorcycles, slip and falls, those type of cases. And I've been fortunate to do a lot of other things in my practice. I do have clients in areas where maybe they have stuff dealing with real estate or uh, landlord tenant disputes and that type of stuff. And generally when you're a client of my firm, if some of those areas come up, I typically handle those cases for free for my clients and benefit of being one of my clients. All right, okay. I know you get this question a lot. Mm -hmm. um, what should an individual do if they are injured in a car accident? Well, the first thing I always say is that a lot of times I get cases and the first thing I tell the police officers is, is that uh, they want hurt. But let me back up. I've, I've got a lot of cases to come in now where people don't call the police. They say, well, it's a small accident, a small offender, but they exchange driver's license. And then the person reneges on the, on the deal to get the car repaired and they find out they're hurt later. And they have no way of contacting these people and in documents. So I always, I always call the first police, call the police officer. No matter how minor you think the accident is, I always call the police and have it documented because it's easier to to have a police report with everybody's identification on it, and it's, and it's always better when you have that information documented because you don't want to have a situation where you think it's small damage and you take it to the repair shop instead of one hundred fifty dollars to repair a scrape. Now it's three thousand dollars. And that has happened to several clients that I've had to come to my office. So first of all, I call the police. And then secondly, after an accident, uh, the police officer may ask where you're injured. If you don't feel injured right away, you may not be injured. Mm -hmm. Always just say, at this time, I don't know, I want to get checked out. You don't want to go in and say, no, I wasn't injured, because if we have to go to trial or litigation, mm -hmm. the first thing the other side is going to say, that the accident, you weren't hurt. And mm -hmm. uh, how did you automatically get hurt later? So I always say, just say, look, say, hey, uh, I don't know how I'm feeling right now. I'm gonna get checked out and leave it at that. And that's, those are the two most important. Call the police officer first, and also don't admit to anything about you not being injured. You know, wait and get checked because you don't know what adrenaline flowing. A lot of times, uh, you may not realize that you hurt, and a lot of times injuries may not manifest themselves until two or three weeks after the accident. So when you say you're not hurt, that information can be used against you if you have to go to trial. Okay. So, after the accident, the person normally get a call from the insurance company? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you'll get calls. This is what I've, I've seen. A lot of times you get calls from these people that are called investigators or mm -hmm. someone say we witnessed an accident. A lot of times those people out there are running cases and they're trying to get your case to come in. It's not, uh, it's not authorized by the state bar and it's done unethically. So, a lot of times you may get calls from people that will say, hey, we saw the accident. And a lot of times you may get people that will call and say they are with the insurance company. If you want to verify whether they're an insurance company, you should always ask for a claim number and for a telephone number. If they can't provide you a claim number or telephone number, more likely there's someone that's out there that's being a scrupulous uh, running for some attorneys or doing something not supposed to try to get your case and send it to a certain doctor's office or somewhere like that. So always, so if you do get a call from an insurance company, always ask for a claim number and a phone number. If they can't give you that, it's a good chance that those people are not related to an insurance company at all. Okay. okay. What are the ones that's calling and say we want to make a settlement with you? So what's the pros and cons of just not well, using an attorney and just selling I always, always tell clients that, you know, 
that you're going to be better off if you have an attorney representative. You're going to get a larger settlement. That's just fact. Mm -hmm. But if they want to make a settlement with you, I always recommend, especially immediately, don't go into anything right away. Because like I said, a lot of times injuries may not manifest themselves for several weeks after the accident. For instance, I had a young lady that called me and about four years ago, and uh, the insurance company said, hey, go ahead and sign this piece of paper. We'll give you $1,200. And if something else is wrong, you come back to us. What the lady did not realize is she had automatically signed a release for $1,200. And three or four months after the accident, she had to have neck surgery, which is going to be $50,000, to $70,000 worth of neck surgery, going to be off work. And she sold her case for $1,200. So what I always recommend is just that if you're not injured, and uh, they automatically want to make a settlement with you. There's no need to rush. It's always just wait to make sure that you're completely 100% healthy. Because once you sign the paperwork, there's nothing we can do if you sign a release, releasing the other part of itchy. Okay, okay. Typically, if they sign to use you or any attorney, typically, how long does it take to receive a check? Well, it, it all depends on the body. Everybody heals differently. I'm a uh, uh, 21 year old person with a, with a whiplash injury may heal within four to six weeks. Someone in 61 may take nine to 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. It all depends on your body. But generally, once your paperwork is in an attorney's office, depending on if it's one of the larger insurance companies, you could hear something within four to six weeks, depending on the time of year. But usually, it all depends on how, 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 how fast you heal from an injury. That's the biggest issue. I have clients, how much is my case worth? And um, when, how much can I get? When can I get a check? Or I had to tell them I don't know because I don't know what's wrong with you. You've got to go and get checked out and make sure you're okay. And once you do that, and you got to go through the treatment if you prescribe treatment, then we can work with. You. I tell all my clients that that the only person that wants a million dollar case is the attorney, mm -hmm. because if if you have a million dollar case, I'm more likely speaking to one of your relatives, or you set up in a hospital paralyzed and, and, and can't move or talk. Only attorneys want million dollar cases. Because if you have a million dollar case from an accident case, you're really messed up. And I always tell my clients, think of it this way, if if you're okay and you're 100%, 100% the body, we want you to get you back to where you were prior to the accident. No one wants to have back surgery, neck surgery. No one wants to have to do with scar and broken mm -hmm. bones. Those are the kind of things that's gonna generate high end cases. And I'm sure nobody wants to go through that. So I tell my clients, let's get back on our feet first. Once you get back on your feet, then we'll work by trying to get the best settlement. And if we can't get the best settlement for you, then we'll go forward filing a lawsuit. But let's get back on your feet 100% first. Make sure that's taken care of because I don't know anybody that would change, exchange back surgery for a million dollar check. Because I don't care how you feel, every one of my clients that have back surgery, they still gonna have to deal with that for the rest mm -hmm. of their life. Okay. How has personal injury and the law changed over the years? You've been I, in business, and particularly here in I, I, think, I think now, every so often, there's a cycle where insurance companies don't want to settle cases, and you have to file lawsuits. That's just the cost of doing business. You've got to fight for your client. What I'm saying now is the insurance companies are pretty much tightening the, tightening the belts where they don't want to pay as much. So we have to file more lawsuits now to make them do what they're supposed to do and give us a good settlement, or let a jury decide. And that just happens every, I think that happens mm -hmm. every so many, about every 10 years or so, the insurance company get in, the, uh, get in this mode that we're going to just not make good offers. And I think we're in this situation now where we have that, where insurance companies are sticking together and say, look, we're not going to pay what we think is, is what you want to pay, so we're going to, we got to fight. So, and I think it'll go back when I, once it goes back through and then the insurance company started back making good settlements. But right now, we're in a time now where, I have to file several lawsuits in order to protect the interests of my client. Okay. We see some of the advertisements for personal injury lawyers these days. What should a person look for in choosing? Well, well I think this, I, I think, you know, I, I used to come from a school that, you know, you shouldn't advertise. But I think it's, 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 it's a good tool to put yourself out to let people know what you do. Mm -hmm. Because you'd rather have an attorney that, that does advertise as opposed to one that sends, sends somebody out to your house, knocking on the door and say, hey, uh, come sign this paper. Mm -hmm. And you have those instances where you have, have people out there that do that. If you advertise, you can check them out and you can find out who this person is. But I say number one, too, when you, when you look at, if you're going to choose someone that does advertise, 
is someone should know something about them and say, hey, um, dude, what do you know about this person? Have you heard anything about this person? And pretty much that's what you're going to get. But you have to think about it. They're able to advertise a lot of times that, you know, they may have some success stories that, that, that you can go after. But I always say is, is the biggest problem with the attorneys is, is communication. If you choose one of those firms you see on, on TV and that advertising, you can't never, you can never communicate with your client, I mean with your with your attorney, then you're gonna be frustrated. So that's what I would look and see, how can I communicate? Are you always do you have to go through three or four people before you see your talk to your attorney? Mm -hmm. uh, when you first meet with your attorney is uh, when you first go in and sign up with that person and you end up signing up with a a, a clerk or something like that, then I think that's a red flag because mm -hmm. you're gonna say, when can I talk to my attorney? Because you gotta trust your attorney. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can trust your attorney is if you can communicate with them. Mm -hmm. And if you never communicated with them, then how are you gonna be able to trust them and say, hey, this is a good settlement, you need to accept it. So I would look at it as if, if I'm dialing any attorney is, uh, that, that I'm trying to, to work with, and I get them off of advertising, I need to ask myself, how can I actually put my eyes on this particular attorney? And if you have trouble doing that, then you may want to get with a firm that, that could that you can speak with the attorney personally, so he can you can feel and see what type of guy or young lady he or she is, and you can build up a rapport with them. Because you got to be able to trust your lawyer. You know, every lawyer is not going to tell you this case. We're going to get your hundred million dollars, but if you got a, a, a figure in your mind as to value your case and it doesn't match up with your lawyer then you got to be able to trust your lawyer he has your best interest. And if you haven't never seen him or talked to him, how can you trust him? Okay. So why should they choose your firm? Well, my firm, I will, I've been around since 1994. Mm -hmm. and, and anybody that I've represented, they have, they have a talk to me personally. If they can't reach me at the office, I give my personal cell phone. Because I believe that, that you got to be able to communicate with your client. you got to be able to talk with your client. And I have clients, and I have, uh, I've been blessed to have a lot of clients, but also, each client needs to have individual attention. Each client needs to be able to know that, that Sam Wiggins, that they can talk to him. Mm -hmm. okay? They may not like everything that I say, but they know they've talked to me over the course mm -hmm. of their of their uh, situation. So when I talk to them and sit down, mm -hmm. it won't be a stranger. I'm going to be a stranger to mm -hmm. them. Okay? And we've been doing this since 94, and I think I wouldn't be in practice uh, that long doing this if, if we didn't get good results for our client. Okay. What advice would you give someone thinking about starting a career in law? Oh, um, you gotta love it. Uh, I don't. I don't consider this a job. I consider this it's, it's almost like a great hobby. I love waking up every morning. If you want to be a lawyer, it's one of the best things that you can do because you can help so many people. You can do so many different things, and and you could have you could represent people, children, elder care, domestic mm -hmm. relations. If you want to be a lawyer, I think. First thing you should do is is do it. Uh, if you're going to college, I would say uh, take as many public speaking classes as you can, and as much as you can as far as legal writing classes and the writing assignments in class. I think it'll be pretty good to major in Eng minor in English, and it's one of the, you don't have to major in like pre law or anything like that. You can major in chemistry. I when I was in law school, they had nurses there, they had uh, stockbrokers, they had mm -hmm. teachers. But I think what I found most what was helpful to me is is that public speaking class. That took me a while to get used to that because okay. I, I, I ran away from that in high school. Mm -hmm. And I would say make sure you take as many public speaking classes as you can and maybe try to minor or take as many English writing courses as you can. And then just do it. It's, it's a fulfilling career. I love what I do. I wouldn't want to do anything else except maybe a chef. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, my next question is, and I guess it's for aspiring attorneys that start their own business once they get you know up and running. Which years were the most challenging in business so far? I don't, I, you know, I tell you, it's not really, and, and I don't, I think the most challenging that I had, that I thought, is that when there was a Republican administration. I'm not into politics, but mm -hmm. I, I, I pretty much I can tell when. when when Bill Clinton was in office, I think we it was it was much more smooth and there's a lot of business going for it. When Bush was in office, we still had it, but it's a little bit more difficult. I'm not Republican, Democrat. That's that's not where I'm going with it. Mm -hmm. I just think it was, for for me, I was able to see a difference with the administration. 
And I don't understand how it works like that because it, it just for some reason, I, I do not, I don't know how it happened, but it just, just happened that way. I thought that when, when we were, my business was a lot simpler and uh, a lot more freer as far as generating income when, when we had a President Clinton in office and uh, President Obama. Uh, President Bush was in office. We still we still did well, but it just seemed like we had to work a little harder. And now we got President Trump in office. I'm filing a lot of lawsuits. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what dynamics that is. I'm not, I'm not saying you know. I'm a Democrat, but I'm not saying uh, that that's the case. But I just sort of I, when I look back over it, every half the thing, it just we were able to settle cases a lot easier. Okay. And had more business during those years. And, you know, it's just maybe it's maybe it's just. The politics, but I, I really think it hadn't been that challenging because one thing about being a, a lawyer, mm -hmm. if you work hard and you keep your clients uh, always on the forefront of everything that you do, you're going to get people to come to you because people always need a lawyer. They always need some sort of help or, mm -hmm. or or some sort of advice. So if you if you if you work hard, and, and my um, it, was a, it was a lawyer that I had a chance to work on a case, he told us, never think about the money, always think about the client, and the money will take care of itself. So I've always position, I always treated my firm as that. I always think about the client first, you know, because I can tell everyone that comes in here, I can sell them and tell them, hey, you know, I don't care if they got you on video, come in to cry, we're gonna get you out, just give us the money, and then they don't get out, they're upset. Mm -hmm. Or you may come in here, you may have a, a fender bender and have a hundred dollar bill, a hundred dollar medical bill. I'm saying I'm gonna get you a million dollars, mm -hmm. and I never get it. But I'm getting these clients, and people are gonna say, "Hey, we can't trust this firm because you know he don't tell you tell you the truth. He don't keep your clients. He don't keep his clients on the forefront of everything he does." So I think it's not really a challenge if you always focus on your client. You'll get people to come to you. So it's a, I can't say we've ever had a situation where it's really been challenging that I can remember. And I thank God for that. You know, that's a blessing for our firm. Okay. So, if they would like to get in contact with you, oh, phone number? My phone number is 205 252 3999. That's my phone. You can contact that, call that number anytime someone answers. And my address is 3346 Avenue South. We're right across the street from yeah. Birmingham City yeah. Jail, up from Memorial Park on 6th Avenue. Okay, okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Wiggins, for your time. Thank you. You look good. Uh, and for more information and more interviews, please check out my website, what'shappenedbirmingham.com. Thank you all again. Have a great day. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.